Hey there, thanks for checking out my channel. Today we'll be working on my 2002 Toyota Tundra. Uh, in order to do an oil change on these trucks, you have to drop the like the skid plate that covers the bottom of the engine. Um, so it's been dropped a bunch of times. <laughs> and the bolts inside or that hold it up are just mangled. So, or they were mangled. I bought new bolts to replace them. And uh, I think there's one, two, three, five that hold it up. And of the five, three of them grabbed really well. The other, one of them is iffy, and then the last one doesn't grab at all. So uh, I started looking into different options for how to fix that. And I think the best option is to do a helicoil. So I have a kit coming. Uh, we're gonna drill it out, thread the new, or you know, use the die, uh, the tap to do new threads on the inside and then insert the helicoil. Uh, it's my first time doing it, so uh, hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes as I do this. Uh, hopefully I don't make any mistakes, but um, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to show you what we were starting with here, <laughs> why we had to do all this. Um, they were super bad. You can see it was so bad when I went to the parts store to try and find uh, like the right size. I couldn't even match it up. I mean, look at that. There's just nothing there. So that's what we were working with. Um, I did end up finding the right size, obviously. It's an, uh, it's an M8 by 1.25. So I just wanted to give you guys the, uh, the before. Like, like I said, that's almost 20 years of, uh, I guess 20 years this year of dropping to do oil changes. So it's, good. it's about time for a refresh. Okay guys, got the kit in. Um, this is what we'll be using today. I just ordered this on Amazon. Uh, you can see M8 by 1.25. These are much more expensive than I was expecting. Um, I think this was $30, um, which I think is just crazy for what it is. Um, you can buy like a whole set of them um, for like 30 or 40 or, I mean, if you got a lot of them in there, they're like 70 or 80. But for a single thing like this it was uh, 30 bucks. I wanted to buy a set, but uh, eight by 1.25 um, wasn't in any of the sets on the cheaper end, so I had to go with the single. Okay, let's uh, let's get into the truck and start banging this out. Okay, so something I was not planning for when I um, was getting ready to do this was you need a very specific drill bit and this kit doesn't come with it. Um, so on the tap it says um, use drill 21 64ths. So I just ran to Lowe's, grabbed a 21 64ths drill bit. Um, I was hoping I would have whatever I needed in the drill bits that I had, but it's a very specific size. So I got it. Now we can uh, get under the truck and start banging this thing out. Okay, so we're up under the truck. We'll be doing this one next. Um, I don't know if you can see it from there. Let's see. I just did this other one and it came out well. I uh, learned a few little things um, that I'll try to explain while I'm doing this one over here. Um, overall, it's a pretty simple process though. First step is drilling out the hole. So here we go. Got the hole drilled out. Let's see if you can see it here. So you can see it's just uh, completely bare right now, as you'd expect. There you go. Okay, next up we'll be uh, actually tapping the hole. So you want to uh, set it up on your um, your holder like this. Key thing to note: the kit does not come with this. I have my own tap and die set um, that I'm using uh, for this holder. Um, you'll have to have one on your own. Also, um, it's recommended that you use some sort of cutting lube, cutting grease, whatever they call it. I don't really know. 
Um, I don't have that. So I've been using PB Blaster, just kind of uh, keeping everything, trying to keep everything lubed up. So I just put a little bit on there and then just kind of, and then as I start going, I'll uh, spray some PB Blaster up there. So key thing here, as you start, you wanna be like perfectly in line with it, with the hole. So it looks like we're doing a pretty good job here. And you can see it actually is starting to cut. So every couple turns, you wanna do a backwards turn to try and um, uh, clear out some of the, the metal that it's cutting away. And so now that I'm locked in here, this is when I'm gonna spray a little bit of PB Blaster in there. Got a nice little shower on that one. And uh, I think the idea of having some liquid in there is that it'll help trap the uh, um, all those medical metal particles and they won't get all caught up in there. So again, you just want to do a turn and then come back a little bit. Ugh. This thing doesn't like to stay on very well, especially when you're working upside down. So. I think the key thing is you just don't want to like force it too hard especially when you're working with steel like this. If you're doing aluminum, um, you know, it'll be much easier to cut. <sighs> Just trying to clear out some of this stuff in there. It's getting hard to turn. Ah. Got to be getting close to the top here. Yeah. So now you can see it's it's moving so easy now. Um, we're at the top, so we can start backing it out. And we should have some good threads in there. Now these aren't the threads that the um, the bolt are going to go into. These are just starter threads so that we can um, put in the actual helicoil itself. So the next thing you want to do is put the helicoil. I hope you can see this. You want to put the helicoil onto the black um, like starter rod here. And so something I learned from the first one is that the steel that we're going through is really thin. So when all the other, the extra um, turns were on this thing, it actually just came out the top and there's no good way of cutting it or anything. Ideally it's the right length and then you just use a, um, like a screwdriver with a hammer and knock off the, the flat top part but I tried that and it's so long, it's just kind of like springing because um, it actually went through the top. So what I did is uh, I just cut off the bottom uh, like two turns or something like that. Hopefully it'll be enough to, um, to not give us any problems up here. And we'll thread this guy in. So. You probably could do it by hand. It's a little difficult, so. Okay. 
So that's much better. It actually is uh, flush with the top of the um, the hole where it's, or where the threads were before. So I should be able to now, I know this hammer's overkill, but it's the smallest one I've got, believe it or not. Just go like this and tap that piece off. And that worked perfectly. I didn't do that on the last one. So now, if we use our test bolt, it should just thread right in. Look at that. Perfect. So, uh, heel coils, they're actually pretty easy to do. That was my second one ever. <laughs> so, I, uh, I think it's, it's super easy to learn and they're super effective. Like that thing was super stripped out and now it works like a charm. Okay, this is the same thing that happened on the first one. Um, I thought I cut off enough threads, but I guess not. So you can see, maybe, let's see here. That's the little nub that you want to hit off, that thing right there in the middle. But the problem is when I go to hit it, you can see it's kind of pulling up because it went past the end. So that top uh, ring, doesn't have anything to grab onto, so it's just pushing up with it. So that, I, I don't know what to do with that. I don't have any like little scissors to get in there and cut that. So we'll, uh, I'll try to figure out a plan. Okay guys, just wanted to give a quick update on what I was doing, ended up doing with this guy. Um, what I did was just screw the, I put the bolt in, screwed it as far as I could by hand. And then I actually just put a wrench on it and just kept, kept screwing it up through the top. Um, what it did was stretch out those top coils until they stretched so far that they broke. Um, so I think it's a good solution. I don't know how to take it out um, so you can avoid doing that. Ideally, I think you just count the number of turns and then uh, cut the heel coil to that right number of turns. I thought I did. I think I was off by one. So um, lesson learned. No big deal. Okay, so that'll wrap it up tonight. Um, once again, I did uh, this one up here. I did this one over here. And I did that one um, right there. Uh, the one on this side is still has plenty of thread. And the one in the middle still has plenty of thread. Um, this one on this side had a good amount of thread also. But it was... All the other ones were... Um, uh, eight by one point two five, and this one was eight by one. So I don't really know. Somewhere along the line, that that happened. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm gonna time lapse me getting the all these under things back on, and then we'll do a we'll close the video out. Okay guys, that's it for this install tonight. Um, again, this is the kit that I used, 5546-8.
that's M8 by 1.25, and then DeWalt 2164 for this specific uh, helicoil set. I'll link both of these in the description below. Um, I would recommend it. Again, like I said, the only issue is that you do need um, your own tap and die set um, to have the actual um, tap holder. But, uh, I mean, I grabbed this one from Harbor Freight for like 20 bucks or something. Um, but, yeah, so that's the only thing you do need otherwise. Um, but, yeah, overall it went well. Um, like I said, these coils, they were a little long for what I needed. So what I ended up doing for the second one that worked the best was I just cut off um, a few rings of it. And it worked really well. I tried doing it for the third one as well, and I just didn't cut enough off. But, um, yeah. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.